as we welcome those of you watching on ACC Network Extra, David Shumate and John Roth. John, interesting the way things have split up. We knew size would be a strength for Duke this year, but the backcourt for the blue team is pretty stout. It certainly is. It looks like, you know, one team really has a, maybe a little bit more size and the other team has a little bit more shooting. And we'll see how that plays out in trying to defend each other as this game gets underway here in just a moment. It'll be John and Williams, I would suspect, to jump it off in the center circle. The white team, as you would expect, will go left to right here in this 12-minute period as we see things from the crow's nest behind the two team benches. 9,314 packed in tight. It is so great to have the fans back. The introductions were awesome, and now we get a chance to play a little basketball. Bill Covington, A.J. Desai, and Anthony Franklin are our ACC officials. Great to have you with us. Good to have the fans. Good to have everybody back inside Cameron Indoor Stadium. As Williams taps it for more, and the white team will have it first. Two 12-minute scrimmages are going to switch things up in between the two, and Coach K is going to address the crowd as well. As they go inside for Bancaro, and a nice play by Jones defensively as he knocks it out of bounds. It'll stay with the white team. If that name sounds familiar, it should here on the Duke campus. Sisters and brothers alike have played in Duke Blue. One currently, Ruthie Jones, playing goalkeeper for the National Rank Women's Soccer Team, and of course, older brother Daniel, quarterback for the Duke football team, now with the New York Giants. 17 to shoot as they inbound for more on the right baseline. The jumper's up and good. It was on the other side of the floor last year, remember, but I envisions that late shot against Boston College that proved to be the game winner here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Moore off to a good start, and a 2 to nothing advantage for the white team, 30 seconds in. Keels looking inside for John, doing battle with Williams, spins to the left, and a nice little hook shot to get it started for the blue side. Theo John coming in here with a lot of experience. Three-year starter in his four years at Marquette can protect the paint and also has some paint moves inside. As Bancaro has his first bucket, got inside on Jones in the paint, 4-2, to two, the white team with the early lead. Just about a minute in here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Keels calls out the offensive set. Gets a screen up top from John, now weaves his way back to the left, got into the paint, a hot set, spun out of it, swings it to the right for Baker. Steps closer, now Roach will fire a three, left it short, and the rebound inside and head the other way is Blakes. I feel like this is a team that's going to play at a breakneck pace at times this year. As they go to the right, Savarino will try one from distance and knock it down. Former walk-on now on scholarship and grandson of the head coach. And a five-point lead for the white side. 90 seconds in. Keels up top off of a screen by John. He is a lethal shooter. That one's a little bit strong. They fight for the rebound. It comes to Roach. Three on one advantage inside for Jones. Off the right window for two. We've seen early Jones and John, the two graduate transfers, are both really veteran, smart, experienced players. who are adding a lot to this Duke lineup every day in practice. You can see their savvy on the court here early in this game. To the right, it's Bancaro. He can shoot it as well. That one a little bit too strong. The rebound fought for. John has it. And here comes Jeremy Roach leading the blue team up the floor, trailing by three. Spots from three, and it rattled out. Williams clears the miss inside. Mark had 23 and 19 in that 14-point win over Louisville at the ACC tournament a week, a year ago, I should say, as they go inside for Williams. Face is up on John, and the jumper is off the back of the rim and out to Jones. Heels will bring it up. Calls out the offensive set with Savarino defending. Roach, now Baker. Right elbow extended, steps underneath him more and knocks it down. The two captains battling, and Joey got the better of it that time. It's good to see Joey back out on the floor and playing well. He missed some time in practice a couple of weeks ago with an injury, but has returned to full workouts now and uh, on the court right now. Now Wendell on the drive, got it blocked by John, heading their way is Keels. Weaving his way through traffic all the way in off the window for two. Keels with his first bucket. Shouldn't be a shock to see Theo John swatting things away. He had 191 blocks while at Marquette. The second most in program history, of course, playing for Steve Wojciechowski. And he's wearing his number here uh, for Duke this year. Number four was what he wore at Marquette. That's not going to work. <laughs> Here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. You can see it up in the rafters, John. J.J. Reddick's number up in the rafters, but uh, 
He did pick his coach at Marquette's number when he got to do. As William tapped one around, around the rim, I should say, they battle forward, and Baker has it. Up the right side with Roach, looking into the corner, now back up top for Baker. His three is blocked by Blakes, gets it back, goes inside, a scoop to John, blocked from behind by Williams. Blakes leaking out, it's a four on one, he'll put it up, no, but the foul is called and he'll shoot two, as Roach will pick up the foul. It is interesting about the, the John coming from Marquette. You know, last year during the season, Marquette played a game at North Carolina during, I think, January, February, and they had a chance to come in here and practice in Cameron Indoor while they were getting ready for that game. And Theo came here and had actually had a picture taken of him with Coach K, meeting Coach K when he came to practice in Cameron. Little did anyone know that he would turn out being his coach for his fifth year of college. And, of course, the associate head coach for the Blue Devils, Chris Carrawell, was there during his freshman season talking about it, Marquette as Blakes is at the line to shoot the free throws here. Yeah, Carroll did a lot of coaching of the Marquette big men during his time at Marquette, and certainly Theo John was in that contingent. Blakes, 18 points a game in his junior season at Blair Academy as both free throws are good. And that puts the white team back ahead, 9 to 8, 8 18 to play in this first of two 12-minute scrimmages. Blair Academy, though, of course, well known around these parts. As Keels jumps up on the left, can't hit the three. Bancaro taps the rebound to Moore out of bounds. Last touch they're going to say by the blue team. First name that comes to mind there for me is Lou Aldang mm -hmm. for a long, long NBA career after his one year at Duke out of Blair. And, of course, Keenan Worthington as well uh, played with Blakes a little bit at Blair Academy. As Moore brings it across, gets a screen from Williams. Now back up top for Bancaro. Looking inside, Williams, backdoor, tried to find Blakes. It was deflected, and they say kicked by Theo John. 9 to 8, 7.54 to play in the first of these two as the white team will have it out of the timeout. Window Moore Jr. inbounding off the right baseline, looking to get it in, bounces it in for Bancaro. Looking inside, Williams now battling with John. Worth noting, the two teams started this period with three fouls aside, so now there's four already on the blue team. As Moore got inside, found Williams, spinning up on John with a right-hand shot, too strong, got his own rebound, went right back up to rock the rim. And that's certainly something Duke fans will look forward to seeing a lot of Mark Williams dominating in the paint and finishing strong. That 7-7 seven, seven wingspan, he is a load to deal with inside at 242. And he puts his team up by three. Off to the left and now Keels. Keels up top for Roach. Roach at the right elbow, bounce pass finds John, a hop step, and he'll rock the rim as well. Nice screen and roll from out top, and the white team up 11 to 10. So an 05 to play in this first of two 12 minute scrimmages. Both teams shooting the ball well. The blue team 46%, the white team 40%. Bancaro looking inside, nothing doing, gets a screen for Moore, dances his way through it, now pulls up from 17. The jumper won't go, and the rebound cleared inside by Keels. Headed up the left side, crosses over, finds Baker on the right, collects it, thought about a three. Instead, he'll wait, give it back for Keels with 20 to shoot. John sets the screen this time. Keels looking for help, goes it alone, left it short, got his own rebound. In traffic, got it taken away by Blakes, but a foul is going to be called. That'll be the first on the white team. And we'll see almost all of the guys here tonight. The one we won't see is A.J. Griffin, who suffered a sprained knee in practice a week ago. The good news was no structural damage, as Mike Krzyzewski said earlier in the week. He's already up crutches, and those of you watching on ACC Network Extra, he was out there dancing uh, at the player intro. It's good to see him moving around as Roach is able to score inside of the blue team. Seesaw is back in front. Yeah, A.J. Griffin, a lot of potential there for him to be a big contributor to this team once he gets uh, back to full health. Bancaro in the paint. Can't get that one to go, and John has the rebound. 12 to 11, the blue team has the lead as we come up on the midway point of this first of two 12-minute scrimmages. Keels down the left side, whips it around for John, slapped out of there by Blakes. It'll stay with the blue team. When you look at the rebounding side of things, it's the blue team with the nine to six edge, which maybe is a little bit surprising with the height out there. Uh, for the white team. Bancaro and Williams. As Roach got inside, got airborne, kicked it to the left for Keels. His three is good. Keels a really good shooter, probably amongst all the freshmen. He's been the biggest surprise during preseason practice and camp and just uh, 
how strong physical he is and how polished he is in various points of the game. And the blue team has opened up a four-point lead, 15 to 11 with 5.32 to go. Moore for Sabarino, spinning up top with Baker, got into the paint, went back to the left and kicked it out. Keels man-to-man -man on Blakes. Now John has him on a switch. They whip it to the left. Sabarino already with 1-3. That one's too strong. Dunk follow wouldn't go for Moore. Bancaro puts it up, and he's hacked by Roach and will shoot two. For Jeremy, it's a second foul. But I don't know if that even counts here tonight. I don't think you can foul out in a scrimmage, can you? I don't think they're going to get to a point where there's only going to be four <laughs> guys out there. But, you know, you did mention something a moment ago. There, that each team had three fouls on their ledger when this game started. Just to, just to give the more approximate of reality when you're playing in a game and you get to the 12-minute mark in the first half or second half, there are going to be some fouls on the board, so you need to learn how to play knowing and being cognizant of what the foul situation is, both for you individually but also for the team, trying to avoid the one-on-one, -on -one, not get into the two-shot bonus and all that. So uh, that's one of the reasons the three were instituted for each team to start this game. And so far since then, uh, the, blue, the white team's only committed one and the blue team two. As the first free throw, and now the second for Bancaro won't fall. Also worth noting, each team has two timeouts, and we're going to do end-of-game timing once we get inside of a minute. Four-point lead for the blue team still. Heels on a baseline drop. Got airborne, kicked it to left, and Baker steps closer, thought about a three, and said he hands one off for Roach. Roach whips it inside for John, couldn't handle it cleanly, got it back back outside for Jones. Now a lob inside to John is picked off by Moore. Wendell headed up the right side. Cut off by Joey Baker. Good defense in transition. Bancaro has it now. A couple of jab steps, and he'll go to work on Bates Jones. Got by him. Oh, goodness. The right-handed stuff. There's going to be a lot to deal with with Paulo Bancaro because he cannot take that jab step and just go up and shoot a three. He can shoot from the outside, or he can take that step and go all the way to the rim. You don't know how what he's going to do. You don't know how to play him. Look at the quick first step and a high riser to throw it down. And just like that, Nolan Smith wants to talk it over, heading up the blue team. They still lead by two, 15 to 13, uh, with 437 to play in this first scrimmage, John. But you see right there why everyone is excited about what Bank Carroll brings to the table. He's the sixth Duke commit in the past decade to earn Max Preps Junior Player of the Year honors. How about this list? Austin Rivers in 2010, Jabari Parker in 2012, Tatum in 2015, Zion in 2017, and Vernon Carey Jr. in 2018. Well, that's quite a grouping, and, and he does have the elite talent of that group. He, he is in the, the category with like a Tatum or a Brandon Ingram as far as uh, what he does now and what he has the potential to become at the next level. So he has certainly got the elite talent level that's going to make a big difference for this team this year. He has had to make some adjustments, you know, learn the pace of the game at this level and make some adjustments to his own efficiency, but he is something that every opponent that he plays this year is going to have a load to deal with. Elite parents as well. His mother, Rhonda, played college basketball at Washington. Left is the program's all-time leading scorer, and his father, Mario, was a college football player at Washington as well. The elite athletes all around. Oh, no question, and you could see it on that last drive. Like, right down the middle, just no hesitation, and slammed it starting out beyond the three-point line. The ferocious dunk obviously makes you think of this, but watching this team in practice, that quick first step certainly does remind you of Zion Williamson. Oh, certainly, and you know, Zion a, a little bit of a different build, but uh, some of the tools there are the same. So the blue team has it now with just one timeout the rest of the way. Roach with it in a two-point lead, 15-13, to 13, trying to get by Bancaro. Jump stop at the free throw line, got it blocked. Paulo right there, but the blue team able to steal it in transition. Baker left it for John, tried to tap it out for Bates Jones, but it goes out of bounds, and the white team will have it. The leading score for the white side is Ben Carroll with four. Keels leading the way for the blue squad with five. There's all the emotion, the energy of the reveals. You're out there dancing, but it's always interesting to see countdown craziness. It becomes about winning. Wendell Moore Jr. said, oh, yeah, I want to win. He's got the basketball in hand. His team down by two. Van Carroll on the left. A step back three. That one's short, and the rebound for Keels. Under four minutes now. And as Keels brings it up on the left, guarded by Moore. Had a screen from John, opted to turn it down. Now Roach on a drive, got by Sabarino, off the window, blocked by Williams. And now Bancaro headed the other way. One-on-one, -on -one, he'll take it himself to lay it in. 
Bancaro, three out of seven from the floor so far, and uh, a, a dunk as well as a length of the court drive, showing a lot of different things in his repertoire. Evens it at 15 as we go under three and a half minutes to play in the first 12-minute scrimmage. Keels in the paint, left it short, trying to get it over the outstretched arms of Williams, who has the rebound, and now here's Blake set it up the right side. Crosses over, gets it inside to Moore. What an acrobatic finish floating in from the left. And we haven't talked about this too much, but Wendell Moore has pretty much a different body than he had last year. He's in much better shape, much stronger, much faster. Mm -hmm. He came back just a new and improved Wendell Moore for his third year. Six straight for the white team. They lead by two now, 17 to 15. And the blue team hasn't scored in nearly three minutes. Baker on a drive at the free throw line, up and under around Sabarino and got it to go. Mark Williams was up there, but that ball got over that long reach of his and nestled in to tie the score. So here we go, 17 apiece, coming up on two and a half minutes to play. Let's go Duke is the chant from the crazies. Williams looking inside, puts it on the deck, trying to go back door for Michael Savarino, couldn't. So hands it off for Blakes, 10 to shoot. Blakes on a drive, got into the paint, had it knocked loose by Roach, it ricochets out of bounds, last touch by the blue team. Seven to shoot. When we come back, 2.20 to play in this first of two 12-minute scrimmages. Moore showing off what he can do. Countdown to craziness. Back in a moment. We're tied at 17. Back at countdown to craziness. David Schumann and John Roth, great to have you with us. The first of two 12-minute scrimmages tied at 17 as we come up on the two-minute mark. Well, it was until Williams untied it. Made a nice move to get around Theo John and had a strong finish to go up 19-17. The white team has made each of their last three shots from the field. High percentage looks right around the rim, including that stuff. So two minutes to go now. Keels trying to tie it again. That's blocked by Williams, but they're going to call the goaltend. So Keels now with seven to lead everybody in blue. Bancaro leads the white team with six points. Neither team in the bonus yet. The blue team's committed five fouls, the white four. One time out for the blue side and two for the white team in the final two minutes here. Bounce pass into the right corner. Moore for three, and that's good. A year ago, he was a 30% three-point shooter, but he knocks that one down, and the white team leads 22-19. to 19. He's a much more confident shooter this year. That bodes well for his three-point game. Roach. Baker, obviously a tremendous shooter to his left. He's got it now. He'll try to tie it, and he will. The two captains match threes to tie the score. 22 apiece. Joey made 16 threes a year ago. Moore working on Keels. Crosses over, got to the baseline, cut off by Bates Jones, whipped it up top to nobody in particular, and it's out of bounds. I think it should be the Blue Team's basketball, and it is with 109 to go. And that's the first turnover by the white team here in 11 minutes of play. Already six ties and four lead changes. We're only playing 12 minutes, but these two teams uh, are going at it. They're going to switch things up between the two 12-minute scrimmages. We're also going to hear from Mike Krzyzewski as he's going to talk uh, to the crowd here tonight. I look forward to get fiercer, though, in the last minute because everybody on the court wants to come away with a win in this scrimmage. Roach for John. Off to the left, it goes and Keels. Thought about a three. And we're under a minute to now. Keels trying to drive, cut off at the right elbow, swings it to the right, and Baker had the three a moment ago. This time he traveled and turned it over. There haven't been a ton of turnovers, just four between the two teams. 52.8 on the clock, tied at 22. Chris Carroll has two timeouts leading the white team, but he opts to keep them in his pocket for the moment. Sitting next to him on the white team's bench is Emil Jefferson. We'll talk about him joining the staff as the night moves along. The director of player development as Moore kicks it to the right. Blake's a three. That's offline left in the rebound for Bates Jones. 35 seconds to go. About a six-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Nolan Smith heading up the blue team. Tells, tells Trevor Keels to go. Now he tells him to calm down and calls out the set. Keels guarded by Blake's. Down to 18 seconds now. 10 to shoot. Keels off of a John screen. Six and five on the timer. Step back three. Offline right. Williams with eight seconds. It's Bancaro with six and five. A chance to win it. Paulo to the left and more. He knows how to do it. At the buzzer. 
Oh, they called him for double dribbling, and he turned it over with two tenths of a second left. We, I don't honestly know what the overtime protocols are. I'm guessing there won't be <laughs> overtime for the first scrimmage, but uh, and I'm guessing you're not going to get a good shot off in two tenths either. So this game's going to be a 22-22 tie. Mike Shashevsky sitting down just next to the white team bench with two tenths of a second. You can't get a shot off. And Chris Carwell looks to the head coach and says, that's all. We are going to end it at tie, 22 apiece. Carroll wanted to see, hey, can I get another minute, coach? See if we can <laughs> uh, untie this thing. But they're going to switch up the teams. Each team shot about a little above 40%. And minimal turnovers, only three for one team and two for the other. Pretty even statistically, as the score would suggest. Also worth noting, while obviously not playing here tonight, A.J. Griffin is sitting on the same bench as the white team that's going to be headed up by Chris Carrowell for these this second 12-minute scrimmage. Nolan Smith again heading up the blue team as it's out of bounds. And some question as to who was off of. Trevor Keels at least has a question for A.J. Desai, the official on the sideline. That discussion in front of Mike Krzyzewski and associate head coach John Shire, who was a part of the announcement Mike Krzyzewski announced this would be his final season. John Shire is going to be the head coach come next spring. And those two guys are sitting side by side at the end of the scores table, marking down notes and taking in this scrimmage. They ultimately decide the blue team with possession as they're working right to left here. As we see it behind the team benches, Savarino on the drive, bounce pass cut off and stolen by Moore. Bancaro in transition, four on three, fed it to Moore, driving in for the first bucket. Coming in from that right wing in stride and getting all the way to the rim on about two dribbles. Blakes now. Crossover dribble. Can't get by Keels. Up top it comes for Joey Baker. Baker off of a screen set by Bates Jones. Feeds it back to him. They're looking inside. Nothing doing. Tried to feed it inside. Deflected and stolen by Williams. It goes into backcourt. The big fella has it. Takes it himself and punches it home with the right hand. Couple of fast break baskets to get things started for this white team here in this second game. And that's going to keep some ACC coaches up at night. Stealing it, leading the break, and finishing on his own. And then you got to worry about the other end of the court where he's blocking your shot, not letting you get anywhere near the basket. 4 nothing, the white team with the first four points of the second 12 minutes. Blakes looking up top there, Savarino. He'll try three off the left, offline right. Bancaro the rebound. Keels will bring it up this time. Bancaro, Moore, Williams, and Roach. The others out there for the white team. And it goes to the left baseline in Bancaro to the free throw line. And Williams thought about showing off the jumper. That one swirled out. And the rebound inside for the blue side. Flakes will bring it up. Gets the screen. Nice move on the right. And the jumper is good. Jalen Blake showing off the jump shot. He's got the first points for the blue team. And it's 4-2. to two. Moore. Bounce pass finds Bancaro. Looking cross court, nothing there. Into the paint it goes for Williams. Trying to spin up on Theo John. Up with the right hand, no. Moore trying to get the offensive board. It's knocked out of bounds by Blake. So a fresh 20 for the white team with 9.49 to play in this second 12 minutes. There's a chance Duke could be a really good offensive rebounding team this year with the likes of Williams and Bancaro. As a nice inbounds pass goes in right in front of the rim, but uh, those two guys and uh, Theo John coming off the bench. I mean, this team has the potential to really do well on the offensive rebounding end of the floor. Keel's got that bucket at 6-2. to two. Blake's from the right corner, can't hit the three. And here's Bancaro handed the other way. Paulo on the drive, behind the back with a dribble. Step back jumper, too strong. Rebound tapped up by Moore off the top of the backboard. They fight for it, and Blake's has it. Bates Jones leaking out behind the defense to lay it in. The pass ahead by Blakes, and Bates Jones brings Blue within two. Six to four, our score. Roach a lob, Keels to throw it down. Think they've done that once or twice? We've seen that in practice scrimmages. Those two guys work together. They're both coming from Paul the Sixth High School a year apart. Playing for Glenn Farello, the head coach of the Panthers. As Jones has it taken away by Williams with a foul, is called. It was a great story about how Trevor Keels first met Mike Krzyzewski. They laugh about it now, but he was there recruiting Jeremy Roach, and uh, the head coach, Coach Farrell, said, hey, would you like to meet Coach K? And <laughs> Keels said he could barely get the words out uh, trying to meet the head. Grown up, obviously, uh, you know, always following Duke, and uh, he's one of the more comfortable, introspective young men that you'll meet, but some things have a way of working themselves out. 
Here he is in Durham as Blakes feeds it up top for Jones. Into the post now. And Theo John backing down on Williams. Pump faked and then got it to go. Nice shot over that long outreached arm of Mark Williams to keep the Blue Devils blue within two. Eight to six, eight and a half minutes to go. Roach off of a screen set by Bancaro. Bounce pass up top. Hollow's open, thought about a three. Instead, he'll drive. Got by Jones off the window, counted in a chance for three. And you see Bates Jones shaking his head. Not much you can do. There are going to be a lot of guys shaking their head this year with Paulo on the drive. Bates Jones sees that all the time in practice, but uh, he, he's a guy who's really helping this team mm -hmm. in the practice situation and will on the court at some point too. But just the kind of the veteran experience, the savvy. Uh, and between him and John, that's one of the reasons that Mark Williams really has gotten off to such a good start this year. He's got to battle two really veteran players every day in practice like that. And Carroll can't hit the free throw. So with 8.13 to go, it's the white team by four, 10 to six. Blake's guarded by Moore up top on the drive. Nearly lost his balance. Got it back to the left. It goes in Sabarino. Drives the baseline. Up and under move. Williams got a piece and Roach out of there with it. Up the right side now with Keels. Underhand scoop for Moore. Thought about a three. Instead, he'll drive the baseline. Step back from 19 and it rimmed out. Blake's headed the other way. The tempo picking up. At the top of the key, he'll launch, and it's an air ball. John able to save it, though, for the blue team for Joey Baker. Shot clock didn't reset, 20 to shoot. Bounce pass inside, stolen by Keels, cutting in front of John. It's a three-on-one. Here's Paulo driving in. He got hammered and will shoot two. And we'll take a break. 7.36 to play in the second scrimmage. It's the white team leading the blue team 10-6 to six on Countdown to Craziness. He is such an active player, that's for sure. And he'll have the chance to drive the basket and create a lot of contact with the way he can handle the ball and move through the lane. So, yes, we expect to see him at the free throw line quite a bit for the Blue Devils. First one doesn't go. Do you want to touch on Emil Jefferson? Joined the staff in July, the director of player development. Obviously played here from 2012 to 2017. Played in a program record 150 games, 67 home wins. That's the most in program history as Bancaro knocks down uh, the second free throw. Just a ton of experience to add to the staff. And part of one of those national championship banners uh, hanging from the end zone, the 2015 team. He was a key player on that group. 11 to 6. A five-point lead for the white team as we come up on seven minutes to play here in the second of two 12-minute scrimmages. The first one ended tied at 22. Theo John can't hit on a turnaround over Williams, and here's Bancaro leading the break. The lob ahead for Williams catches. Gets his feet underneath them. Now he's double team needs some help. Finds a cutter and Roach. It got deflected. They fight for it along the sideline. Williams saved it to Bancaro. And now Moore can reset with 15 to shoot. Keels on the right. Can't hit the three, and Bates Jones has the rebound. Two teams still in search of their first hit from distance. 0 for 4 so far. In this second 12-minute period, off to the right, it's Baker. A step back three, and that'll change that. There you go. In the first game tonight, combined the two teams were 4 out of 14 from three-point range. Two for each squad in that half of the night. And the blue team draws within two with 6.27 to go. Van Carroll had it slapped out of his hands by John, but a foul is going to be called. Theo John, a prolific contributor for Marquette when he was there, starting 26 games a year ago, played in 27, said he thought he was done with college, but this opportunity came along, couldn't pass it up, a chance to play for Coach K, a chance in some respects to be reunited with Chris Carwell, and he is going to be an intricate piece for the team this year, you have to imagine. Roach lost it on the way up, and here's Savarino headed the other way. It's Bates Jones, he can shoot it, he'll try. And it's offline right, and Williams the rebound. Outlet pass for Bancaro. Quick hit ahead for Keels. Lightning quick in transition. Another fast break basket for And him. now a steal, and a hit ahead for Bancaro. Into the post, off the window for two more. White team on a bit of a run, and now opening up a six-point lead with a lot of speed. 15-9 to nine now with 5.44 to go. Just that quickly, they put the clamp down, got a steal, and an easy bucket. Into the post and John, spun by Keels, and he'll dunk one down. 15 to 11 as we cross the midway point of the second scrimmage. More for Keels. The lob to Williams, who touches it down home. 
He was so high above the rim, he almost guided it in more than dunked it. He found his spot down there uh, on the low block, and if he can get a spot like that and a connection with one of his guards, that can happen a lot this year. Baker on the right, can't hit a jumper. The rebound for Keels, a chance to add to a six-point lead. Fed Roach driving in, blocked by Blakes. Roach got it back inside. A couple of pump fakes, whips it back outside. Now up top, it's Bancaro. So the right and more. Looking inside, trying to drive, cut off. Step back jumper is good. White team sizzling here in this second scrimmage, hitting 60% from the floor. That'll work, 9 of 15. And they've made four of their last five from the field to open up an eight-point lead. With four and a half to go. Here's Blakes on the drop. Cut off, fed it to the right, and Sabarino. He gets inside, but lost it going up out of bounds and over to the white team. You can see the frustration from Michael Sabarino. Made the move, got inside, but some sweat on the hands. It slipped out of bounds. Blue team has had a little bit of a turnover issue in this game. Not too much in the first portion, but they've had five turnovers here in the seven and a half minutes of this one. The white team brings it up. Keels with six, Bancaro with five, Moore and Williams each with four. Bounce pass for Bancaro, touch pass for Williams. Hesitates, goes up, and flushes it home again. When he catches in the low post, turn the lights out. 21 to 11. Four minutes to go. John for Baker. Top of the key, a three. A high arcer that swirled out. And Williams the rebound. Now Bancaro up the right side. A couple of hesitation dribbles. Underhand scoop for Keels to the left. And Williams for three. Stop it! Mark Williams <laughs> knocking down threes. He dunks on one end and comes back the next time down and hits a three. Oh, boy. Oh, goodness. Didn't try one a year ago. Might need to try a few more this year. It's 24 to 11. John spun to the baseline. Williams knocked it loose. It's out of bounds. Last touch by the big fellow. He's earned a break. We'll take one. 324 to go. The white team leading 24 to 11. David Schumann alongside John Roth. Great to have you with us. The white team leading the blue team 24 to 11 behind nine points from Mark Williams. And it's Bates Jones out of the timeout from the left. Can't hit a three and Williams swallows in the rebound. He's got three rebounds, a block, a steal, nine points, four, six from the field. And he's hit a three. What do you want, coach? I got it all. <laughs> Moore on the drive. Got into the paint, forced it up and drew a foul as Baker reached in. So he'll shoot two. It's really tempting, too, to think of him as still on the rise. I mean, last year at this time, he was not a guy who was playing 15 or 20 mm -hmm. minutes a game for the Blue Devils as a true freshman. Really, the minutes didn't come till later in his freshman year when he really put together a, a good last three weeks of the season, great ACC tournament, and he's picked that up to start this year. And so you can see a lot of growth in his game and a lot of room to continue to grow. Well, as Moore hits the first free throw, you know, you're exactly right. We talked about 23 and 19 in that game against Louisville at the ACC tournament. Career highs for points and rebounds, and it felt like every game he was building on in that tournament, that's why you want to see what he could do against Florida State. Absolutely. As Moore hits a pair, opens up a 15-point lead, 26 to 11. You want to talk about a talented front court. Williams and Bancaro, it's hard to find anything that's going to be better than that in the country. I know it's very early it's on. Early you don't get ahead yeah, of yourselves, right. but those two guys are awfully good. In it goes for John. He'll rise up and throw it down. And then Carol. And, and you got that were, coming off the bench. Yeah, <laughs> they were both in down low when he went to the rim, and they wisely decided, let's just let this go. 26 to 13 now. Keels on the left. He'll pump a three. Too strong. The rebound tapped out for Roach. A chance to attack. A kick out for a more three. And that one won't go. And this time, John able to clear it. Just over two minutes now. Baker on a drive. Fed Blakes, his three won't go. And the rebound for Williams falling down. The foul is going to be called. That's on John. And the white team is in the bonus, so we're going to get a one and one at the other end. Only one exhibition this year for Mike Krzyzewski's team. That'll be against Winston-Salem State on October 30th here at Cameron Indoor Stadium at 1.30. And then right to it. New York City, the Champions Classic against Kentucky from Madison Square Garden. Speaking of tough tickets, 
Uh, you know, you don't, want, you don't want to say this every time Duke has a game, but Coach K's last trip to Madison Square Garden, uh, that event, the Champions Classic, is regardless is always one of the big events mm -hmm. to start the college basketball season. Uh, quite a doubleheader, but Duke and Kentucky, the old rivals, to go at it in the garden to start college basketball 2021-22. Uh, yeah, doesn't get much bigger than that for an opener. As Williams is into double figures with 10, and then, oh, ho-hum, you come home for Army for the home opener. The alma mater. Uh, for Coach K, uh, playing uh, a, a home tournament for that uh, Friday and Saturday right after the Kentucky game. And then, you know, there's a Thanksgiving trip to Las Vegas to play Gonzaga and Ohio State and the ACC Big Ten. So quite a few challenges in this non-conference season for the Blue Devils. 28-13 to 13 as Baker can't hit the three in transition. It's the white team more. Wanted to lob it for Williams but couldn't control it, and Samperino's out of there with it. Under two minutes now, Blake's on the drive. Got in on Roach, and an offensive foul is going to be called. With 1.49 to go. Yeah, there's just so many moments that dot the schedule uh, that are going to be so key. Most people think that Gonzaga is going to be awfully good this year. That's a highly touted matchup. Uh, and then, as you said, the ACC Big Ten, Duke takes on Ohio State this year in Columbus. Absolutely. And then, you know, ACC play for Duke will begin with a couple of games in December before New Year's. So... As Keels will try a three on the right and stroke another one. He's got nine now in the second scrimmage, and the white team is pulling away. 31 to 13, coming up on 90 seconds to go. Theo John. A handoff for Joey Baker on a drive, got inside, kicked it to the right corner for Bates Jones, and a foul's going to be called, I believe, on the pass. And that'll be the fifth foul on the white team, so no free throws coming yet. Well, we began the night talking about the return of fans to Cameron Indoor Stadium. And, John, it, it's almost emotional seeing them back, but it's interesting to me at least as John gets inside and he's found by Williams how quickly normalcy sets in. It, this feels normal again. Just like old times, yeah. right? Like, the only thing I guess that's a little different is that everybody in the arena, almost everybody's wearing a mask. Yep. That's about the only thing that really looks different beyond what would normally be here for Countdown to Craziness. As Theo John will head to the free throw line. And the first attempt is too strong. They call it a shooting foul. Some of the walk-ons will come in. Keenan Worthington, Spencer Hubbard, and Stanley Borden will come in. If John can hit this free throw, San Marino and Baker will head out. Worthington, of course, on the team a year ago. A lot of people don't know, but Spencer Hubbard in many ways was listed as a sophomore. He was a part of the practice squad a year ago. Yeah, he was out there every day working against these guys in drills and practices. So familiar with everybody on the team. Very energetic, scrappy guy. No question. One more free throw for John. Looking for seven points on the night. And it's good. That's the most by anybody on the blue team. Williams had 11, or has 11 so far for the white team. As Borden comes in, and that gets a huge ovation. As Theo John will head out. Borden, a seven-footer out of Istanbul, Turkey. Keels now, four-bank carrow. Whips one to the left and more. Trying to drive the baseline. Slip, got his bounce back, and they're going to stop play just to make sure. Right, everything's dry over there. You don't want anybody to hurt in an exhibition event like this. As Bill Covington stops play with 107 to go. 63% shooting for the white team. It's about 11 for Williams, 9 for Keel, 6 for Moore, and Bancaro with 5. Paulo with 11 points on the night. With the two games combined, Keels with 16 and Williams with 15. Keels will try a three on the left, and that one is good. So Keels now with 12, and it's a 20-point cushion, 34 to 14. The white team is 13 of 20 from the field, 3 of 5 from distance, and 5 of 7 at the line. And now Keels has a steal, but he falls down as he gets it, so he's out of bounds. It'll go back to the blue team. Baker, Borden, Hubbard, Blakes, and Worthington out there right now in blue. as the crazies are imploring the fans across from them behind the scores table to stand up 
and they acquiesce. Want to make this place loud for the final 50 seconds. Blake's off of a screen. Looking to drive into the paint. Push shot, left it short, and the rebound for Bancaro. Final 40 seconds now. Paulo sizing up Borden. He'll take a three. Left it short, the rebound for Hubbard. Just a couple more possessions left in this one. Hubbard bounce pass into the post and Borden. One on one with Bancaro. Backs him down, spins up, and it won't go. We'll see if the white team shoots up 20, 34 to 14. Shot clock is off, final 15 seconds. They've outscored the blue team 19 to three over the last five minutes. And Wendell Moore Jr. is gonna dribble it out, fitting one of the captains tonight. He had six in the second 12 minute scrimmage, seven in the first, 13 for the night. And the white team wins it 34 to 14. And Wendell tried to finish it off with a windmill. As the team will Head over and give a shout out to the Cameron Crazies. They were so missed a year ago, and it's so great to have them back. The team started the night as they were introduced to top the tables in front of the Crazies, and that's how they're going to end the night. So happy to have the fans back, and the Crazies are so happy to be back with their team.